Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm broadcasting to you live from Budapest, Central Europe, situated on the gorgeous Danube River. Uh, General IELTS, of course, uh, on this channel, General IELTS Help. Today, we're looking at speaking part one and two, some original questions made by our excellent team. Um, speaking, it's the same for academic and uh, general. So even if you're an academic IELTS student, hang in there. It's a good class for you. Hi, Sonsona88. Hi, Uchifuna. Hi, Osama. Hi, MD. Shohidaldula. How are you doing today? Good to see students joining in. All right. Our uh, materials are coming from our website, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. That website looks like this. Uh, so if you're studying for general IELTS, get some world-class materials, click on that big red button and join. If you're looking for academic IELTS, find this website, www.aehelp.com. Hit that big red button and join there. All right, students, uh, you can get our exam books. We have uh, two books for academic IELTS, two books for general IELTS. You can find them on Amazon. Uh, search for GE Helps General IELTS, AE Helps Academic IELTS. If you uh, have questions about IELTS or our products, send me an email, adrian at gieltshelp.com. The website, again, is gieltshelp.com for general IELTS and aehelp.com uh, for academic IELTS, okay? Uh, later today, we will do, uh, I will do another lesson on Academic English Helps channel. That's for academic IELTS. It starts at 15 o'clock Central European time. General IELTS classes are 13.30, so starting now to 14.30 Central European time. Uh, today, we're doing speaking. It's the last class for this week. Uh, no class Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, we will be publishing a new uh, sample IELTS speaking interview with a French speaker. So look forward to that. Hi, students. I see lots of students have joined in. That's great. Hi, Ahmed. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Navjot Kaur. Good to see you. All right. Uh, and then the last two days of the month, uh, task one, email letter on Wednesday and speaking part three on Thursday. Let's get right into our speaking. So this is a speaking class. You can hear me. Unfortunately, I cannot hear you, uh, but that's okay. I like to imagine that wherever you are in this beautiful world of ours, uh, you're sitting uh, comfortably and you are repeating nice and loud what I am saying in the speaking section. So make sure to uh, repeat the questions and the answers for this, okay? It is speaking, so I want you to speak at home. Uh, even though I can't hear you physically, spiritually, let me hear those beautiful voices of yours, okay? All right. Uh, so IELTS speaking, uh, it's about a 10 to 12 minute uh, interview uh, with a native English speaker, often a British English speaker, but it could be somebody from Australia, uh, Canada, New Zealand, US. So uh, be ready for different kinds of accents. And uh, you will walk into the uh, room. Usually the speaking is on uh, a different day than your sit down test. So usually before or the day after you will be given a time. You will be notified about that. Make sure to go one hour, one hour. You think I'm crazy, but I'm not one hour early. Okay, one hour before your interview time. Few good reasons for that. Number one, if your car breaks down, if your bus is late, uh, if you're stuck in traffic, uh, you don't want to miss the speaking portion of the IELTS because then you probably have to redo the whole test. It's expensive uh, and it's stressful. So don't do that. Uh, get there early, okay? The day before, uh, do something active during the day. Go for a nice long walk, a swim, uh, a hike. Uh, so that you're tired early in the evening, go to bed early, use lots of English, 
Tell everybody around you, your parents, your brothers, even if they don't speak English, your friends, that, hey, I'm just going to speak English to you today because tomorrow I have a very important exam. So please put up with me just using English for the next 24 hours, all right? That will help you. These steps, these strategies can save you a full band score, okay? Uh, wake up fresh in the morning uh, and uh, have a good breakfast. Make sure to stay hydrated. The brain needs sugar, water to function, okay? Uh, if you don't put gas in your car, it doesn't move. If you don't put sugar, water into your brain, it doesn't work. Don't drink too much coffee, okay? All right, um, so you get to your exam an hour early. Uh, take some questions like this with you. So you see I have these part one questions we will look at momentarily. Part two, uh, and then uh, part three, of course. Uh, we're not doing that today, but take some speaking questions with you to the interview and uh, find some people to practice with, okay? There should be other students there waiting for their exam. They will be very happy if you go and ask them to study with you, okay? Stay calm. You can't learn English in an hour, so just do your best uh, with the English that you built up until that day. Don't stress. The sun will shine. I'm with you in spirit. Um, all right. So, uh, when you walk into the exam room, again, take a deep breath, let out your concerns, and stay calm. You're just the number. You're not pals or friends with that examiner. The examiner will not remember you tomorrow. They will not lose sleep over your good or bad English, so don't worry about it. Uh, just stay calm. All right. Uh, so... Uh, you walk into the room, picture that the examiner is your grandpa. Why? Because you will remember uh, to speak loud, clear, full sentences, good examples, and your grandfather doesn't know what you know. They don't use the cell phone the same way like you do. They don't use the internet the same way. They don't watch the same TV shows. They don't listen to the same music. So you have to be very clear. So imagine the examiner is your grandfather, your grandmother. They love you. They're not there to judge you. They're there to listen to you, speak loud, clear, respectfully, okay? All right, and then the examiner will start with part one. They will say, uh, welcome to the IELTS uh, speaking interview. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. Please have a seat. How should you respond to that? Please have a seat. What can you say? Please have a seat. You can say, thank you. Yeah, keep it simple. And if you want to be very natural and show some fluency right away, if you have a chance, say thank you. I'm excited and a bit nervous to be here. Okay, they might say something like, oh, that's okay, just take it easy or uh, just relax, okay? You might get a response for that, but just a simple thank you. And then uh, they will ask for your identification. So uh, may I see your identification or your passport, please? How can you answer that, okay? How can you answer that next question? They will ask for that. They need to check and make sure you say you are who you say you are. Sometimes people try to cheat. Uh, Rekha Rabat says, yeah, here you are. Or here you go. Okay. Um, Rahul, I'm pleasured is not correct English, okay? It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be here is correct. Uh, Rekha says, here you go. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Okay, you can make it a little bit more fluent. Uh, please take a look. Uh, Kyber says, of course, uh, here it is, Kyber, of course, uh, here it is, or there it is. Uh, there it is is a little bit awkward, Kyber. I would say, of course, here it is. It's still in your hand. Here it is, okay? All right, <clears throat> now the examiner will look at that passport. They'll match it with your uh, registration form, and then they'll give it back to you. So make sure you put it in your pocket. Don't forget it there. Um, and then the examiner will continue with uh, 
Okay, uh, what is your full name? They might actually have your passport while they ask this question. So what is your full name? Thanks, dear Kyber is a weird international English. We don't say dear uh, as much as uh, many people in India and other parts of the world believe that we do. I see that in my emails as well. A lot of people say thanks, dear. It's kind of weird. Uh, elderly people use the word dear. Uh, among each other. Younger people don't use the word dear. I really wanted to tell everybody that. Um, we use it in letters like dear management, uh, but we don't really use dear, especially in North America so much. It's kind of weird. Okay. Unless you're old. If you're like 60 or 70, 70, 80 years old, then you say dear, um, but not young people. Young people don't use that word. Okay, Abhishek says, my name is Abhishek Dangwal. You can call me Abhishek. Uh, Abhishek, Ab okay? Sorry, Abhishek, I, you have a tough name for me. Uh, my full name is Hadil Radwan, and you can call me Hadil. Okay, that's good, Hadil. That's a good answer, okay? Uh, yeah, because their next question is always, what should I call you, especially if you have a difficult name. So make sure you say what they can call you, okay? Um, my name's Munzir Khalid Khan. You can call me Munzir, okay? Sure. If I want to be polite, I can say, my name's Munzir Khan. Please just call me Munzir. Okay, again, students, make sure you're repeating me. So don't just sit there at home listening to what I say. This is not just a listening exercise. So don't just be like, yeah, yeah, okay, that's what I'll do. Uh, absolutely just repeat me. I have a pretty good idea of what I'm saying. I'm quite confident it's correct. So I want you to just repeat me uh, and learn the same, okay? All right, <clears throat> so... Uh, then they will ask you maybe one or two more general questions to make you feel comfortable. Uh, remember, the IELTS examiner is not your friend. Don't get too comfortable and give one sentence or one word answers. Uh, what do you like to do with your friends? So what's a good answer for that question? What do you like to do with your friends? Okay, give me a nice answer for that one, student. Remember, your sentences should be complex. You should use correlative, coordinating, subordinating conjunctions, so words that join together. Ideas. Abhishek says, I generally spend, spend, I generally, uh, Abhishek, when you uh, say generally, then definitely use the present tense. Remember, the present tense expresses uh, a general activity or action. So I generally spend weekends with my friends. Uh, we plan together for a movie, and thereafter, we spend a good time in the mall uh, and uh, have dinner at a restaurant. Just last weekend, we went to a pizza place. It was great. Okay, good. Uh, Abhishek, don't forget those examples. Easy to throw it into your response by using just. Just last weekend, I went to Pizza Hut and we had a great time. Um, viral videos. Uh, use the question. Uh, I like to go trekking, not do trekking, uh, play f and play football because I love this uh, game. Sure. Uh, just make sure to use connections. Uh, comma is, does not work their viral videos. You need to use the word and and use the question. Okay. Uh, I like to go trekking with my friends and play football because we love this game. Okay. Good. So <clears throat> I'll take, um, I like to go trekking with my friends uh, in nature or play football as we are huge fans of the game. Just this past weekend, we played for three hours at our community 
field. There we go. Okay, so here's a nice answer for that one. Again, repeat after me, nice and loud, ladies and gents, please. What do you like to do with your friends? I like to go trekking with my friends in nature or play football as we are huge fans of the game. Just this past weekend, we played for three hours at our community field. Fantastic. Okay, some good answers there. Let's keep rolling. I really want to get to part two today. So let's keep moving along. If I miss some of your responses, don't worry. I always try to find different people uh, for different questions. So then the examiner will say, you're very welcome, viral videos. Um, then the examiner will say, uh, let's talk about phone apps, okay? It's a uh, very pop culture these days. Uh, IELTS always tries to find a general but new uh, topic for you uh, candidates to respond to. So let's talk about phone apps. It's a common topic for many students uh, these days, so you should be able to converse around this topic uh, as long as you have a decent level of English. Here we go. Uh, what apps do you use every day? Now remember, the uh, examiner didn't say phone apps, but they introduced it up here. So every question here will deal with phone applications, okay? So software that you use on your phone. So what apps do you use every day? Okay, don't overthink it. Just keep it simple. There are absolutely apps on our phone that we tend to use every single day, uh, such as the camera app, okay, is a very common one. The phone app, actually dialing, calling people is a very common one. Uh, texting app, uh, something that you use every day. Okay, so keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't try to think of some really special app that you use because you don't want to get your language into trouble right away, okay? Uh, Munzir, good. Just make sure you throw the word app in there to make it clear for the examiner that you're not just talking about using Facebook on a computer or social media, but on your phone. So Munzir says, in my leisure time, I use the Facebook app on my phone to stay in touch with my loved ones. Uh, like this morning, I sent a picture of myself in front of the IELTS uh, exam center. Right, Munzir? Throw that... Um, uh, throw that uh, example in there. Okay, Prashil Balusu. I have multiple apps on my phone, but I choose WhatsApp more just to get in touch with my family. Prashil, you're indirectly answering the question. I'm not asking you how many apps you have on your phone, and I'm not asking you which app do you use to get in touch with your family. I'm asking you which app do you use every day. So Prashil, if you want to get a better band score, Answer me directly, okay? Uh, I use WhatsApp on my phone every day to get in touch with my family. Just this morning before I walked into the exam center, I called my mom so that uh, I made sure she's okay. All right, Prashil, that will get you a way better band score, okay? Again, students, repeat me while I'm uh, correcting other students. Pachu, British Council Power Word app, that's okay. But again, just be careful not to get yourself into trouble um, by um, saying something specific that you have difficulty expressing or talking clearly about, okay? I'll take one of the answers here that uh, I've read. So I use uh, WhatsApp on my phone every day or daily, if you want to paraphrase every day, to communicate with friends and family. Uh, like this morning, I called my brother to wish him good luck with his job interview. Okay? So again, repeat after me, students, nice and loud. What apps do you use every day? I use WhatsApp on my phone daily to communicate with my friends and family. Like this morning, I called my brother to wish him good luck 
with his job interview. All right, fantastic. Keep up the good work. I see there's lots of answers coming in. If I don't catch yours, just keep going. I'll catch it next time, okay? Um, good luck with, it's with Rahul, not for. Okay, good luck with his job interview. Uh, all right, next question. What is your favorite app? And the examiner might not actually ask you, ask you why unless you forget to include the reason and then they'll ask you why is that, okay? Uh, part one is not as conversational as part three, but they might still ask you um, why if you don't give a reason. So it's really good to include a reason, all right? So get your answers up there. While you do, I'll read a couple of the previous answers. Uh, Shanze Khan says, an app I use every day is WhatsApp to keep in touch with my sisters. I often use the camera function to show what I do in my everyday life. Shanze, very nice. I like it. Okay, it's a great answer. Uh, like this morning, I uh, took a few pictures of the exam center so they can uh, be here with me in spirit, Shanze. All right. Hadil Radwan, uh, my preferred app. Okay, just watch that grammar correction there right in the beginning, Hadil. Uh, the most preferable app I use is a bit awkward. It's not terrible English, Hadil, but it's a bit awkward English. Uh, a much simpler, natural way to say it is my preferred app is Facebook because I can socialize with many of my friends. Uh, example given yesterday, okay, we wouldn't use EG in conversation, Hadil. Uh, for instance, yesterday I got in... Uh, I got, con I got in contact, I got in contact is the correct expression, Hadil. I got in contact with one of my high school friends uh, whom I haven't talked to in a long time, okay? So Hadil, here's the correct way. Uh, my preferred app is Facebook because it allows me to get in touch with my friends. For instance, uh, yesterday I hooked up with an old high school buddy I haven't uh, spoken to in years, okay? All right. Diana P. My favorite app is called Transport. It shows me where my bus is in real time, Diana, in real time. So my favorite app is called Transport. It shows me where my bus is in real time. It's really useful and helps me uh, not to stress about waiting for the bus, okay? Uh, that's how I would phrase that to be more natural. Diana, uh, if you uh, miss what I say in your correction, don't worry. This video is being recorded and will be on the channel uh, in about uh, one hour after the class. Okay. All right. Uh, Ali Al Hadi, uh, Facebook is my uh, favorite app, uh, which offers me a lot of information and fast news. For instance, I just got updated on my friend's relation status and uh, was surprised to find out that he's getting married. Ali, two important corrections. Uh, don't use the word us. We're not talking about us. Remember, the examiner is your grandfather, your grandmother. They don't use Facebook, okay? Uh, just talk about yourself. So Facebook is my favorite app. Best app is weird. Okay, Facebook is my favorite app. It offers me a lot of information. A lot, Ali, it's two words, okay? A lot. English teachers are very picky about that one for some reason. Um, and uh, don't repeat the word news. I just got updated on my friend's relationship status. Okay, some good answers there, all right? So, um, <clears throat> my preferred app is... Facebook because it not only allows me, it not only lets me stay in touch with many of my friends but also keeps me up to date on important news uh, like the Um, new government like the new bridge that's 
being built in my community. Just making it up, but giving you a good example here. Uh, notice students, so again, paraphrasing favorite, uh, preferred. Uh, when you paraphrase keywords in the question correctly, your band score will go up, okay? Uh, when you use correlative conjunctions, so not only, but also, your band score will go up, okay? So uh, repeat after me. What is your favorite app? Why? Okay, repeat and loud so you can hear yourself. Use sensory integration. Use your mouth, the muscles of your mouth, your ears, your eyes combined together, sensory integration, much more powerful learning than just quietly staring and listening, okay? My preferred app is Facebook because it not only lets me stay in touch with many of my friends, but also keeps me up to date on important news like the new bridge that's being built in my community. All right, fantastic, let's keep rolling. Do you use any apps for learning? Answer this one for me, students. Do you use any apps for learning? Now, these do you usually, they're kind of um, uh, rhetorical questions. Rhetorical questions means that there's already a presumed answer, so an answer that we believe will be coming. Uh, in most of these do you questions in IELTS, the answer is yes, I do. Uh, just because no, I don't is very brief and uh, doesn't give information about your English fluency. So, uh, so think yes for most of these do you questions in um, part one or three, okay? Uh, Rahul says, yes, mostly I use YouTube for learning app, which is a video search engine. So Rahul, remember... The IELTS examiner is your grandfather or your grandmother. They don't know what you know. Even if they know what YouTube is, you have to imagine they don't so that you can clearly fully express your ideas and show your language, okay? So yes, mostly I use YouTube for learning, which is a video search ad and has lots of great uh, lessons by teachers, uh, even live lessons, uh, for instance, IELTS, um, okay? so. Fully express yourself, okay? Abhishek says, I use Duolingo uh, app for learning. Um, it offers me several different languages, and I not only learn English, but also Spanish through this app. It's very effective uh, and has lots of different tools, okay? Uh, Kyber, yes, I use YouTube and Google Chrome for learning information. Kyber, don't use the word things. Things has zero value. It is the lowest value word uh, for communication. Things has no value. If you write things in an, in an essay in school, uh, in university, the teacher will say, yeah, what things, okay? So yes, I use YouTube and Google Chrome for learning information. Just yesterday, I got a lot of new knowledge for, from Google Chrome. Uh, from the Quora app and in YouTube, I especially watch uh, IELTS lessons from a teacher called Adrian, okay? Your examiner may not know who I am, so you can't just say that, but thank you for the um, plug. I appreciate it. Dilpreet, uh, Shran says, yes, certainly I use a plethora of apps for studying like Quora, YouTube, which is a video app, and I can watch different lessons every day. Uh, to improve my language skills. Uh, you don't need the I watch YouTube daily uh, because you have every day Dilpreet in there. So don't over speak. Careful about that. All right. That's good. All right. Uh, certainly. I use several apps to gain new knowledge. Uh, such as YouTube, which is a video library and search engine that I use primarily to study English as there are many live and recorded 
uh, video lessons for English. Oh, I already said that, so we'll stop there. Okay, um, so there's my answer. Repeat after me. Do you use any apps for learning? Certainly. I use several apps to gain new knowledge, such as YouTube, which is a video library and search engine that I use primarily to study English, as there are many live and recorded video lessons. Great. So uh, notice the leading expression, certainly makes it natural. Okay, again, I hope you're repeating me. Try to copy my pronunciation as well. Notice the adjective clause, which is a video library and search engine. So uh, YouTube, it's an object, okay, a virtual object in this case, but it's an object. Uh, so using uh, the relative um, noun which, a relative pronoun, I should say, a relative adjective, which, okay? Uh, so that will work. All right, students, uh, let's go to the next question. If you could make an app, what would it be? Conditional question, answer should be conditional, okay? If you could make an app, what would it be? If you think that's a tricky question or it catches you off guard, you go, whoa, that, why are you asking me such a weird question? Uh, well, because I want you to use a conditional and I want you to show me your knowledge and fluency. Uh, but you can ask me for time, okay? So you can say, that's an uncommon question. Please give me a moment to think of an answer. And then I'll say, sure. Okay, and then think, actually think about an answer. What would it be? Keep it simple, all right? Don't try to invent a new app. You could just be another uh, communication app like WhatsApp or uh, Skype, all right? So don't try to get fancy. On IELTS, it's not a good idea to be fancy with your answers because you will make mistakes and your score will go down. Give complex answers, but everyday clear ideas, okay? All right, Munzir says, if I develop an app someday, I will make one called Universal Translator, which will help many people around the world uh, who want to learn any language anytime. Okay, for me, Munzir, that's a good answer, except the end is a little bit weird. I would keep it more simple. Um, so I think a Universal Translator, like in science fiction movies, means that you can translate language in real time kind of like what Google Translate is doing these days, but that's okay, so take something that exists. And I would say it like this, Monzir. So I would say, if I develop an app someday, uh, I will make one called a Universal Translator, which will help people communicate with each other even though they are speaking different languages. Okay, and now you use an even though in there, so good, your mark is going up, all right? Okay, again, students, make sure to repeat me as I'm making these corrections. Uh, that's why I read out the name of the student writing so you can see which one I'm going to say and then you can say it with me, okay, with the corrections. So, um, Naresh Amarani says, if I had the opportunity to make an app in the future, it will be for learning English in a unique and a easy way which will involve interactive methods for users. Instead of attractive, Naresh, I would say interactive. It's a good answer, okay? That's a good answer. All right. Given the chance to create an app, I would make a Universal translator for the phone, which would allow people of different languages to communicate with each other in real time. And this would really help people when they travel and do business, okay? 
So something like that, all right? Taking a little bit of uh, Munzir's uh, response there and just uh, shaping it to my own. But again, good. So you're taking some good ideas. You're not being overly clever with it. And if you need a little bit of time to think of an answer like this, ask for it. Well, that's an uncommon question. And I've never given this idea any thought. Could you give me a moment? So you could start off like that, right? That'll work and they'll say, yeah, sure. Okay, repeat after me. Well, that's an uncommon question and I've never given this idea any thought. Could you give me a moment? Uh, given the chance to create an app, I would make a universal translator for the phone which would allow people of different languages to communicate with each other in real time. And this would really help people when they travel and do business. Okay. Notice how after that first uh, expression to buy some time to think of an answer, uh, I did a five second count. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand. Uh, it's okay to think for five seconds, but actually think. So, and it's okay to think for five seconds to come up with your idea. Be comfortable with uh, a five second pause. Don't be like, oh, I've just paused. The world's ending. Oh, I'm losing band scores every second. Oh no, nine, seven, three, two. I've got no band score. Uh, no, don't do that. So don't panic. Use the time um, to think of a good answer. And if the examiner uh, starts talking or jumps to the next question, just say, oh no, wait a second. I have an answer. Just give me a moment to think. So let them realize that you're communicating with them. You're there to show your English level. You're not panicking. You're, you didn't forget the question. They don't need to jump to the next question. Communicate. Say, no, uh, wait just a moment. I'll give you an answer. Uh, and then they'll say, oh, okay, okay. And then you can say, well, an app that I would definitely uh, like to create at some point is a universal translator, okay? So... Uh, feel comfortable. Practice this before you sit the aisles. Okay, uh, so we'll jump through that last question and go to part two. Okay, so you've had your part one back and forth question and answer with the examiner. Now the examiner will say, okay, uh, that is the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, here's a card. Please don't turn that over. Uh, here's a pencil and here's some paper. Uh, you will have one minute to look at the questions on the card. Uh, think about your answer. Take notes if you wish. Then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start and when to stop. Are you ready to begin? Don't just look at them and because they'll start, okay, but it's awkward. So actually say, yes, I am. Okay, yes, I'm ready. Uh, and then uh, they'll look at their timer or their recorder, which often will have that timer, and they'll say, okay, uh, your one-minute preparation time begins now. So you turn over the card, you look at the questions, don't start reading like a madman, and just one minute is lots of time, okay? One minute is lots of time as long as you stay calm and you know what you're doing. Uh, look at the questions. And start planning. So you turn over the card and this is what you see. Part two, talk about an object that is very important to you. What is this object? When and where did you get it? Why is it uh, so important to you? What would you do if you lost it? Okay, so I think a lot of students at this point, their number one answer would be my phone. Okay, so that would probably be the number one answer. Okay, now I don't recommend um, choosing your phone for every answer, okay? Uh, 
mobile phones are actually pocket computers, smartphones. We call them phones traditionally, but they're not actually just phones. They're basically tiny little computers uh, that we keep in our pockets. Uh, they're very complex machines. Uh, they're, they can be tricky to talk about, and a lot of students talk about them. So the examiner will not be too impressed by choosing your phone for this question. Okay, so I say avoid uh, talking about your phone. Try to pick a different uh, answer. So what would be a number um, two or a number three answer for this one? Okay, so aside from your mobile phone, what else could you talk about? Uh, what is an object that is very important to you? Okay. Don't answer cell phone. Okay, laptop, sure. Okay, e laptop is actually a better answer than phone. Why? Because you are very clear that it is a computer and you're talking about a computer. The problem with uh, my phone is that a lot of people don't realize they're actually talking about a computer and not just a phone. Okay. So your laptop, laptop is a good answer. What else? Other than your laptop, what is an object that is very important to you? Think big. If you have a car, maybe your car is very important to you, okay? Yeah, Dilpreet, uh, a piece of jewelry, like a necklace or a ring, especially a wedding ring, a watch. Yeah, so piece of jewelry, sure. Let's call the watch jewelry for simplicity's sake. So a watch, necklace, a ring, okay, especially a wedding ring. All right. Uh, these kinds of objects are a little bit easier to talk about. Rekha says uh, my passport or Mukesh says my driver's license. Viral video says my toothbrush. That might seem funny, but that's actually a very good uh, answer for this. My toothbrush is a very important object as it helps me to keep my teeth clean and healthy. Absolutely. Viral videos. I could talk to you two minutes. No problem about the importance of my toothbrush and how I use it, where I got it, especially if it's an electric toothbrush, it's a brilliant answer, viral videos, my electric toothbrush, okay? Uh, passport, absolutely. Passport is a very important object, your electric toothbrush, okay? So in my humble opinion, um, these are better choices than my phone. Probably my phone will be the number one choice for a lot of students. Uh, and so you're competing, you're being compared, even though they're not supposed to compare you. It's very difficult if nine from 10 students are giving their phone as the answer. So it's better to answer a piece of jewelry like a watch, a necklace, a wedding ring, passport, your electric toothbrush. Those are all fantastic choices, all right? So let's take uh, one of these, okay? Let's take passport, okay? What is it? So here's your one minute notes, okay? Let's get some good notes on the paper. So what is the passport? Remember, when you're talking about an object, you need to answer, it doesn't matter what these questions are on the card, okay? When you talk about an object, you need to answer appearance, function, and importance, okay, and origin. Now, the questions in this case are basically asking you for the same information. Uh, so remember, appearance, function, importance. Uh, so passport, what is it? 
Okay, what is a piece of passport? Or what does it look like? You could take a book, but everybody, let's focus on the passport for now. So let's all stay on the same page so that we can develop a good response here. Okay, so what is a passport? Okay, this might sound strange, but again, your examiner, think about them as your grandfather or grandmother, and maybe they have no idea what a passport is. They haven't traveled in uh, 50 years, okay? So what is a passport? Okay, you're showing your English level here. You're showing that you can describe. And the first question is, what is the object? Don't just say, it's a passport. Uh, explain what that is. And passports are actually changing these days quite a bit. So uh, Rekha says passport is a government document. It's an international document, and it's vital for identity. Rekha, that's fine, uh, but uh, we're not talking about its function. So it's a legal document. What is it? Sure, it's important for traveling overseas, but we're not there yet. You don't want to jump around in your uh, part two response. You want to have nice, clear structure. So first, it's appearance. What does it look like? What is it? Imagine that I'm an alien, okay, with uh, green head, antennae, big black eyes. Um, so what is it? Sure, it's a legal document, okay, that's fine, but it's more than that. Okay, I wouldn't start it like that. I would start it more simple. And this is just my notes, okay? So these are just my notes, all right? Okay, then I would maybe say legal document. Okay, so this is the one minute note taking. Okay, so that's what I would be doing so small booklet with photo ID chip legal doc okay and notice that I'm writing this very fast that only took me about 15 seconds international ID used for travel used for this exam dangerous to lose um, did I miss anything absolutely where did I get it Okay, so those would be my notes for my one minute. All right, small booklet with photo ID and chip, uh, legal document, international ID used for travel, used for this exam, dangerous to lose. Last uh, year is when I got it, it's good for 10 years. I got it at a government office, okay. Uh, now I look at the questions. Am I answering all of these? What is the object? Yes. When and where did you get it? Yes. Why is it so important to you? Kind of. What would you do if I lost it? Okay. So add that to my notes so that I make sure I have it. Okay. Uh, yeah, Rahul says it's expensive, so I could uh, add the price in there as well. Sure. Okay. All right. Now I'm ready to speak. So when my one minute is up, then I can begin speaking. And before I begin speaking, before my one minute is over, I want to have my first sentence ready. Okay, so this is still my notes here. My first sentence needs to be ready. What should be my first sentence for this question? Okay, so talk about an important object. What is this object? When and where did you get it? 
Why is it so important to you? What should be your first sentence to start talking about your passport, students? It's a very important question, and I want you to really think about this. Remember, you have just two minutes. You can see a lot of information in two minutes. You can include examples. All right, so give me your first sentence the that you need to have ready. So when the examiner tells you your one minute is up, you're not looking like a deer caught in headlights. You're not like, uh, okay, uh, I'm going to start uh, speaking now. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, no. All right, and I'm not poking fun. It's just really important that you use that two minutes. You don't waste time in the beginning or the end. Keep it simple. Your first sentence should be very clear, very direct, and simple. Okay. Vocabulary should just come naturally, Prashil. Uh, you shouldn't be thinking about new vocabulary or high-level vocabulary to include in your two minutes, that should come naturally. If you're trying to force vocabulary, Prashil, into your two-minute speaking, I guarantee you'll make mistakes, okay? If you use high-level words incorrectly, Prashil, your mark's going down. You better use simple words correctly, okay? If you can't naturally use uh, rare words. Okay, Pachu says, passport is a legal document in which information of the person is given regarding their nat nationality and address. Pachu, the question is about you. What's an important object for you? Use the question. Uh, Dilpreet, in today's topic, I'd like to talk about my passport. Dilpreet, not direct enough, okay? You're still not direct enough. Just say, an object, which is very important, for me, is my passport. It's that simple. Okay, Dilpreet, too many students talk about the uh, moon and the stars and being happy to be alive and being happy to be here and the opportunity to have a chance to talk for two minutes. All of that is garbage. I don't want to be rude or harsh or very strict with you, but I'm just being honest, okay? That is wasting my time, wasting your time, wasting your band score. I want you to directly answer that question, okay? Uh, I don't want you to thank me for an interesting topic, okay? Uh, I don't want you to say that there are lots of objects, Rekha, that you can talk about, okay? I want you to directly talk about the important object in your life. So a good first sentence is... An object that is, or if you want to paraphrase, you can say a personal belonging that is of the utmost importance to me is my passport. Okay, that is a strong opening sentence. It very clearly and directly answers the question that the card is asking you. Okay, Don't waste my time with catchphrases and IELTS textbook templates like thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk with you today because guess what? You got zero points for that. Okay, You just wasted 10 seconds. All right. So here we go. Uh, repeat after me. A personal belonging that is of the utmost importance to me is my passport. Keep repeating after me. This is a small legal document which is issued to me by my government and is recognized internationally as my personal identification. It contains uh, my picture, birth date, and location, as well as 
my nationality, of course, and places I have visited around the world. Okay? If I'm lost at this point, no problem. I just um, uh, look at my notes and use that to continue, okay? So it's used for travel, it's used for exam. My passport is required of me whether I want to visit another country and cross its borders or to prove my identity in certain situations uh, like at the beginning of this speaking exam when you asked me to present it for you. My passport is not only important for me because it lets me see the world, study abroad, or study abroad, but also uh, because it is a nostalgia and memorabilia and record of places I have uh, visited, like just last year when I went to the U.S. for the first time, I got a stamp crossing the border and now it is a keepsake. Okay. So I'm just going along here, students, but I'm showing you how you can build your fluency. There are lots of different ways to do this, okay? Uh, and I'm building uh, from my notes, okay? If I forget what I'm doing and I get stuck, I'll just take a couple of seconds and um, I look at my notes and I see what I used, what I haven't. Too many students... Uh, do speaking part two without looking at their notes and without looking at the card. Many students just look at the card in the one minute preparation time and write down notes in the one minute. And then in the two minutes, they never look at the card and they never look at their notes. And so many examiners are kind of going, really? Did you just memorize all your notes and all the questions on the card in that one minute also? That's pretty impressive. Um, don't do that, okay? Uh, look at the card, look at the notes. Make sure you're answering all of those uh, questions and using the notes that you actually thought about, okay? It's important, all right? Of course, uh, like most other people in my country, I got my uh, passport at a government office. Uh, mine specifically, I got a year ago for uh, around a hundred dollars and it is valid for the next nine years. If I were to lose it, that would be both disappointing and dangerous as it can be a cause of identity theft. So 
certainly I would report it lost immediately to the authorities and get a replacement. Okay, so that's about two minutes. I just typed it out there really quickly. All right, uh, Rahul, nostalgia means to uh, think about old memories. Okay, so if I'm thinking of my wedding day or my trip to uh, Hawaii, then that is nostalgia. All right. Um, okay, uh, students. So at this point, I want to check the card, make sure I didn't miss any of the questions. What is this object? Okay, I covered that one. When and where did I get it? Covered it. Why is it important? Talked about it. What would I do if I lost it? Talked about that also. Okay, great. Let's go through this answer again together and repeat after me nice and loud. Certainly, if you do it this way, you will get a band eight or a band nine, okay? So just repeat after me nice and loud, students. A personal belonging that is of the utmost importance to me is my passport. This is a small legal document which is issued to me by my government and is recognized internationally as my personal identification. It contains my picture, birth date, and uh, birth location, as well as my nationality, of course, and places I have visited around the world. My passport is required of me, whether I want to visit another country and cross its borders, or to prove my identity in certain situations, like at the beginning of this speaking exam, when you asked me to present it for you. My passport is not only important for me because it lets me see the world or study abroad, but also because it is a nostalgia and record of places I have visited. Like just last year, when I went to the US for the first time, I got a, time, I got a stamp crossing the border and now it's a keepsake. Of course, like most other people in my country, I got my passport at a government office. Mine specifically, I got a year ago for around $100, and it is valid for the next nine years. If I were to lose it, that would be both disappointing and dangerous, as it can be a cause of identity theft. So certainly, I would report it lost immediately to the authorities and get a replacement. Fantastic. Step by step. Uh, that's how you do it. Okay. That's a part two that will get you a high IELTS band score. Students, I challenge you to answer this same part two question. Uh, choose a different object. So a car, a, a ring, a necklace, please don't choose phone. Uh, if you choose phone, I will not respond. Uh, so choose something else. Uh, send the recording to my email, okay? So uh, here is my email address, adrian at giltshelp.com. That's coming from our website. Uh, record your own answer for this part two, just the part two. Record it on your phone. Send me the MP3 to my email, and I'll let you know how you did, okay? Uh, any uh, topic is okay, except passport and phone. Do not choose phone. I don't want to listen to you talking about your phone and passport. Don't choose it because we just did it. So anything else. Okay. And then send me your recording. That is it for me for today. I hope you got some good practice and value from this lesson. Uh, we will continue on Wednesday with the next General IELTS class, which will be Task 1 Email Letter, 1330 Central European Time. Now I'm off in 30 minutes to teach on our Academic English Help channel. That will be a Task 2 Members Chat class. So members, I know there's a couple of you in this class. Please join there. Uh, and uh, everybody, remember, if you want to get high band scores on IELTS, Get great practice materials, videos, a fully interactive course uh, for your phone, tablet, and PC. Please check us out at aehelp.com. Click that red button. Do yourself a favor. 
spend a couple dollars so you save a couple hundred dollars and not sit IELTS again. And for general IELTS, go to this website, uh, gieltshelp.com, green background, click that big red button there, okay? All right, students, thank you for being with me today and for this week. Uh, again, practice makes perfect, so be sure to practice lots. If it's late in your country, I wish you good rest, and I wish you a great rest of your weekend. Bye for now.